In this video, you will learn the meaning of science and religion, the faith and the fact, the common sense in science, the relationship of science and religion, and the science and religion in Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. Science is a family subject for everyone. We have learned it since we were in the kindergarten until now. However, religion is also part of our life too. But have you guys ever wondered what is the relations or concept between science and religion? But before we go further on that topic, I would like to recall and explain more details about science and religion. So what is science? Science is a systematized knowledge that derives from observation, study, and experimentations that carry out in order to determine the nature of principle of what is being studied. Other than that, it also known as a systematic study of natural event and condition, or known as a scientific knowledge. However, science have three branches. So, the first branches is called as a biology or also known as the life science. It is a study of living things such as human, plants, or another example is cat. Cat is a living thing, thus any study that related to cat is known as biology too. Okay, secondly is earth, science, or also known as geology. It is a study of the surface and interior of earth such as soil, coal, and also petroleum. The next branch is a physical science which is physics and chemistry. It involves the study of non-living matters and energy. For example, is temperature and friction. So I think that's all about science and now we will proceed to the next slide which is religion. Okay, now we will discuss about religion. So what is the actual meaning of religion? Religion is a social cultural system of design and behavior and practice, moral, worldview, tax, signify places, prophecies, ethics, or organizations that relate humanity to supernatural, transcendental, or spiritual element. So basically, religion is a belief that we hold and practice that we apply in our life. Okay, for example, as a Muslim, it is compulsory for me to fast on Ramadan. However, it is not compulsory for another religion to fast during Ramadan. So, I hope everyone can really understand about the meaning of religion. Okay, now we will proceed to the classifications of religion. There are five types of religion which are polytheism, monotheism, atheism, animism and also totemism. So, what is polytheism? Polytheism is a religion that believes there are multiple gods in their life. It is a belief system of ancient Greek and also Roman. Secondly is monotheism. So, what is monotheism? Monotheism is religion that believe in single god. This is a belief system that believed by Judaism and also Islam. Thirdly is atheism. They believe there is no God in this world. For example, is atheism itself. Next is animism. Animism in which they believe their God is a non-human being or nature world. For example, is indigenous nature worship or known as Shinto. Lastly is totemism. Totemism is where they believe that human or nature being connections, which is Ojibwa or nature and nature American belief. Okay, I think everyone is already understand about science and religion. So now let's see the difference between both of them. The first difference is the meaning itself where religion is belief in the worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a god. However, science is the study of the nature and behavior of natural things and the knowledge that we obtain about them. Now, let's move to the concern. In religion, religion is concerned in both, which are the natural and the supernatural, while science focuses on the natural world. Okay, 
people that are professional in religion is known as religious, while science is known as scientists. To make you guys more understand, I would like to provide some examples. In religion, our thoughts are dependent to an immaterial soul or spirit, while according to science, neuroscientists explain that our talk is dependent of brain states. So by providing the example, I hope that everyone can fully understand about science and religion. So that's all for introductions of science and religion. I will pass it to the next presenter, Sakina. Thank you, Arisha. So we'll move on to the next topic, which is faith and facts. The bond between religion and science has not always been an easy connection. Many have debated whether religion and science should interact. Some believe that religion and science are compatible, while others believe that religion and science are conflicting. So in this subtopic, we will go through more about the differences of science and religion and why they are incompatible. They are incompatible, first of all, because they both compete to find truths about the universe. There are some fundamental truths about the universe that believers have to accept in order to be religious. The reason why people are so concerned with harmonizing science and religion, as opposed to, say, science and architecture, or science and baseball, is because science and religion are competitors in the field of esoteric truth about the cosmos. Lastly, they are using different methods to ascertain what is true. Science has an exquisitely refined series of methods honed over 500 years to find out what's real and what's false, while religion doesn't have a methodology to weed out what's false. They have authority, revelation, dogma, and indoctrination as their methods and no way of proving that that's false. The war between science and religion then is a conflict about whether you have good reasons for believing what you do, whether you see faith as a vice or a virtue. Firstly, science as a set of tools. We all know that science needs observing nature, framing, testing hypotheses, and doing experiments. Second, science finds truth about the universe with the understanding that these truths are provisional rather than absolute. Lastly, science has had success after success in understanding the universe. The method of using faith has led to no proof of the divine. In contrast, religion adjudicates truth not empirically, but via dogma, scripture, and authority. True faith. The edifice of religion additionally dealing with morality, purpose, and meaning. But different religions often conflict things claims and there is no way to judge which claims are right. There are over 4,000 religions on this planet and their truths are quite different. Next, I will explain about scientists and their wide range of positions. Scientists, like people in other professions, hold a wide range of positions about religion and the role of supernatural forces or entities in the universe. First is deism which posits or put forward as fact that God created all things and set the universe in motion but no longer actively directs physical phenomena. Second is Thies, who believe that God actively intervenes in the world. And lastly is scientism, which holds that the methods of science alone are sufficient for discovering everything there is to know about the universe. Many scientists who believe in God, either as a prime mover or as an active force in the universe, have written eloquently about their beliefs. Now, we'll go through to the next subtopic, which is common sense in science. What is common sense? It is plainly stated, common sense is information gathered from everyday knowledge, and science is true research on a particular subject with concluded facts. Common sense is important for humans. It helps us to survive in all of the usual situations of life. But as the knowledge of the human race has increased, it seems that common sense has collided 
with our ideal rational scientific methods and with our scientific theories. The theory of general relativity, proven with many different empirical tests to be very accurate representation of the gravitational force, the nature of light, and so on. So the differences of common sense and science. Firstly, science as a way of thinking. It possesses many vital qualities for true understanding that common sense does not. Second, science based on observations we make. Science operates under theories, constantly revised and checked by experiment. While common sense has no structure to it, it is explicitly subjective and is subject to all manner of cognitive biases. There is no need for testing, replication or verification when you are reasoning for yourself. No checks for you to pass or fail, no peers reviewing. It is no wonder why science is so much better at explaining things. Next, we will move on to the next slide with Natsiha. Thank you, Sakina. Next, we will continue about common sense. Can we trust common sense? I say as no. It is because common sense only rational. In other words, common sense is indeed very common. We all have different idea of what it is. Second, common sense is thinking that feels right. There is nothing more than to think that just feel right. But what feels right to one person may not feel right to another. The last one is no evidence. To claim that our common sense is true, there is no evidence to prove it. It's just our sense. The example of common sense in science is time deletion. We know what it is time deletion since we have learned in modern physics, right? So, I have asked a few of people, if there is a pair of twins, what is staying on Earth, why the one travel to the space as in the figure, and after 10 years, they meet again. So, are they still have the same age? Most of them are answering yes, they are still same age. So, here we look. So here we can look common sense is individual against the scientific research. As we learn, the answer should be not same because the one who travel to space are aging slowly obey to the time deletion concept in special relativity theory. The similarity of science and religion. Both are concerned with the truth and understanding and also the search for purpose and meaning. Next, we will look at the how conflict between science and religion occur. It is because science focuses on explaining physical dimension of reality. Why? Religion focuses on explaining spiritual dimension so that relation between them is hostile. Each side are claims that the other side denies and vice versa. There are three theories between science and religion. First, hostility theory. Second, harmony theory. And the last one, indifference theory. Hostility theory. It means that science and religion cannot coexist. Science and religion each make claims that the other side is denied. When science is right, religion is wrong and vice versa. As example, in 1633, Galileo versus Roman Catholic Church in solar system debate. Galileo is a scientist, claims that the sun is static, why the earth is moving around the sun. Why church is believed that the earth is static and the sun is moving around the earth. Why in 1859, conflicts Charles Darwin in his theory of evolution occur. Darwin is a scientist, claims that human are made up or come from a monkey, means that the, develop, the development of human is from a monkey. While the religious 
believe that human are created from the God. And as a Muslim, um, we we have Al Quran, Kitab Al Quran, and we know that human are made up from soil and created by God. Next is harmony theory. The harmony theory states that both science and religion are compatible. They can coexist together. As proven, reformer John Calvin encouraged Christians to study nature through scientific investigation because science was the study of God's handiwork. As example, baby's development in pregnancy. In scientific research, the development is from fetal to a baby, while in Kitab as Al-Quran, it stated development is from Nutfa to stage 5 which is tracing the bone with the muscle. Even though the names or terms in every stage is different, but the content of development is still same. So here, it is the means of harmony theory which is science and religion are balanced. The last theory is indifference theory. Indifference model is both science and religion make declaration that are completely unrelated to each other. Science is focused on classification of empirical observations, while religion is focused more on ethics, ritual, and they have no empirical entailment. As example is building a house. To build a house, it only involves science fields such as physics and mathematics and unrelated to religion. The last theory is indifference theory. Indifference theory suggests that religion and science exist in two different domains. When there are in different domains, there will be no conflict. They exist simultaneously in human life, but they both have different properties to each other. In spiritual issues, Religion will provide the answers, while it comes to natural issue, then science will provide the answer. As example is fatwa. Fatwa is in Islam is a formal ruling or interpretation on a point of Islamic law given by qualified legal scholar. Fatwa are usually issued in response to question from individuals or Islamic court. Fatwa decisions are referred to Al Quran, Hadith, and discussion among the Mufti. In this example, we can see that religion issues are only solved by religion. Next, we will move to the next slide with Fidaus. Thank you, Nadia. Now, let's go to the next subtopic, which is science and religion. Once I was seven years old, my father told me that from an Islamic standpoint, science is considered to be linked to the concept of Tawheed, which is the oneness of God, as are all the branches of knowledge. In 1040, an Arabic Muslim, Ibn al Haytham, was an early proponent of the concept that a hypothesis must be proved by experiments based on confirmable proceedings or mathematical evidence. Hence, understanding the scientific method has been uncovered since 200 years before Renaissance scientists. The Islamic metaphysics underlying epistemology and ethics is deeply marked by the dialectic of the visible and of the invisible. Phenomena are the signs of divine action in the cosmos. In fact, God is present in the world, and the creation of which God ceaselessly renews at every moment. So, how about the facts of science and Christianity? From the 1870s to the 1920s, many Protestant scientists and theologians and some Roman Catholics believed that the higher the biblical criticism, as well as natural science, mandated the formulation of a new theology stressing divine eminence, God's everyday working in and through the processes of the nature. However, at the end of the 21st century, a good number of leading Christian scientists and the theologians 
including some who combined that role, such as Ian Barber in 1923 until 2013, and is engaged in a growing international conversation about issues of interest to both communities and the range of opinion reflects disagreements of about the nature of God and the nature of humanity and the nature of nature. Now, let's move on to the science and Hinduism. Well, actually, science development in Hinduism is quite static. That's why modern science was brought to India during the 1800s by the British as the part of colonization process. The goal of science in the colony was not the advancement of science, but rather the exploration of natural resources, flora and fauna, to the feed of needs and demands of Britain and in its ongoing industrial revolution. Traditionally, Hindu thinkers approach the still unresolved mystery of the universe by looking back to the Brahman, which is their God, as somehow associated with the creation or production of the universe. However, by the late of 21st century, there are thousands of Indian scientists with Hindu background. Most do not see a conflict between their religion and their science, but some do notice a difference in orientation. Some have been led to astounding discoveries through the application of ancient Hindu insights to the new fields of inquiry. Okay guys, I want to show you something. Me, as a Muslim, our main resources is Quran, and Sunni. So, I will show you guys the scientific facts in Quran. Firstly, it is sky protection. In Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 32, A'udhu billahi na shaitan al-jim, Aja'alna sama'a saqafa min mahfuz. It means that, and we made the sky a protected city. Okay, we take a look at the words, saqafa min mahfuz. It means that, protected ceiling. In science, the sky protects the earth from the little rays of the sun. If the sky did not exist, then the sun's radiation would have killed all of the life on earth. It also acts like a blanket wrapped around the earth to protect it from the freezing cold of the space. The temperature just above the sky is approximately negative 270 degrees. If this temperature was to reach the Earth, then the planet would freeze over instantly. The sky also protects life on Earth by warming the surface through heat retention. Alright, the second fact in the Quran is about the iron. Well, actually, iron is not natural to the Earth. It did not form on the Earth but came down to Earth from the outer space. This may sound strange, but it is true. Scientists have found that billion years ago, the Earth was stuck by meteors. These meteors were carrying iron from distant stars which had exploded. In Surah Al-Hadid verse 25, It says that we send down iron with its great inherent strength and its many benefits for humankind. As a conclusion, we cannot deny there is a variance between science and religion. However, we should believe that there are wider and finer perspectives of a deeper religion and science will be found if we do a critical research. We have to consider to both of them as it can lead to a holistic and balanced growth of individuals, either in physical or spiritual. So I think that is the end of our presentation for today and thank you for your cooperation. Thank you.